Hello, everybody. We are supposed to be live right now. Is there anybody out there? Can you guys confirm that I'm live right now? Let me know with a little message in the chat box, please. Is there anybody out there? Let me know. Hey, Vadim, how are you, man? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you smell me? What's up? Hey, thanks for joining. So uh, my mic is active and my camera. You guys can see me, you guys can hear me. Is everything functioning? Yes, Paul. Hi, I'm live. Hi, guys. Nice to see you guys. Awesome. Happy New Year. I hope that uh, 2021 will be a great year for all of you guys. And thanks for all your support in the past years. I really appreciate it a lot. I would not have been here without you guys. So thank you so much. And thanks for tuning in. And also, don't be afraid to ask me anything. Ask me any questions you might uh, want to know the answers to and stuff like that. So just as with the previous live stream, I'm going to start with a little... Uh, cool guitar to show you guys check this one out check this one out oh my goodness it looks so nice check this out this is my uh, new ltd phoenix uh 1000 deluxe it's such a cool guitar i mean look at this thing ever since these came out i think a year ago or something i was like i had to have one and I finally got one, and I'm very, very stoked. Uh, so yeah, this is an ESP LTD guitar. And this is actually my first LTD ever that was made in Indonesia. All my other LTDs were made in Korea, and I love all of those. So I, I was, I have to be honest, I was a little bit, um, not scared, but a little bit hesitant to order a new guitar from LTD because I know that they make a lot of them uh in both factories so they make certain guitars both in korea and in indonesia but uh yeah i got this one from toman and uh and it's it's a great guitar um i can't really tell the difference i mean i can't really tell that this is an indonesian guitar as opposed to a korean one by my by, by playing it and by looking at it it's a very well built guitar so that was really a relief um, Vadim asks, what is the neck pickup? It's uh, actually a sort of a P90. It's a Seymour Duncan Fat Cat or something. A Seymour Duncan Fat Cat, I believe. And it's a, it's a P90. So it's a really nice, uh, it's a really nice sound for cleans and, 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 you know, stuff like that. And the bridge pickup is a uh, Seymour Duncan um, Custom. So that's the first guitar that I own that has a Seymour Duncan Custom in it. I'd never tried one of those, so that's a really nice pickup. It's really beefy, and uh, this guitar is very resonant and very full sounding. So it has a very thick sound. It's not, uh, you know, super articulate like some of my other guitars, with that really uh, bitey top end. It has a lot of body, a very full sound, absolutely amazing, and it's a neck through body as well. So um, there's a maple neck going all the way through the body. And uh, the body wings are made of mahogany. And this uh, guitar also has a coil split or tap or wh whatever you want to call it. And yeah, I love it. It's so awesome. It sounds great. It, it feels great. It plays great. Um, yeah. Is really loud. I have no idea if you guys can pick that up via the mic, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, it sounds awesome. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this guitar. It's awesome. You'll be seeing this in the future on my videos. Of course, I need to write some riffs with this thing. Of course. So uh, yeah, awesome. Just wanted to start the stream with this to get it uh, to get the ball rolling. So yeah, I'm going to put this down right now. If you have more questions about this guitar, feel free to ask them in the chat.
I don't have a proper stand or case for that guitar yet because the, the shape is kind of weird. Um, and I also got a Kemper stage, which is here. Last time I asked you guys about the whole Kemper thing and I ended up getting one. Look, here it is. My Kemper. And uh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit as well. It's a really, really cool piece of gear. Uh, there are already some questions coming in, so I'm going to answer a couple of questions first. Um, Vadim asks, did you use a Marshall JCM 900? Cannot deal with it at all. I haven't used one in my studio, you know, at my proper setup with all my gear. I only tried one years ago in a rehearsal space, and I wasn't really impressed. But to be honest, back then, I really wasn't into Marshall amps that much. Um, so, you know... It's, it's a bit hard for me to judge. I'd love to try one one day. I remember seeing a video uh, that Fluff did about the JCM 900, and he said that the Tool Reverb version, the one with the reverb, sounded the best or something. So yeah, I'd love to try one. I mean, if it's like a JCM 800, but with more gain, that could be cool because my uh, JCM 800 studio doesn't have a ton of gain. And uh, yeah, it could be cool to have uh, like a version of that, but with a bit more juice, so to speak. I know that the Silver Jubilee Mini has a bit more uh, gain, but it has a more a warmer and round sound to it. So I don't know. Um, I'd love to try one. They're not expensive. So who knows? One day, maybe, you know. C. Shepard asks about the LTD guitar. Did you put some foam at the nut? Yes, I did. And there is actually a question that I prepared uh, by someone else. A JH guitar asked me, beautiful demo, why the Schecter have tape over the strings behind the nuts? Okay, so a lot of people um, ask me this stuff. So I'm going to answer it again. Um, I put tape on the, the, the strings past the nut. I'll show you guys. Like sometimes I'll put tape. On the strings there and sometimes I put like foam rubber and uh, yeah the goal there is to mute the resonance that happens here when you play like staccato heavy distorted riffs if you don't do this often not always but often what you'll get is resonant sound so the strings will kind of go like ding, ding, ja -da -da -da, ding, ja -da -da -ding, you know and uh, when you mute this it's just totally silence so it's kind of like a manual noise gate in a way i highly recommend doing that if you're into very chuggy heavy stuff with a lot of gain you can experiment this doesn't look very fancy i know people have told me why do you put tape on your guitars i know you're right uh, but yeah you can put foam rubber under there you even have those string things the string um the string uh, i forgot what it's called but you have those special like hair tie thingies that you can put here and there's uh, a bunch of solutions for that. But uh, yeah, that's why I do that. I hope that answers your question. Okay, let's see more questions. Running running on empty. You made it. You made it, man or, or girl. <laughs> Welcome. Um, Eric Weissenborn. Hey, good to see you. How do you? How the heck do you afford all this stuff? People ask me that as well. And people think I'm rich or something, which is not the case. It's all about priorities. It's all about not having a car, so not driving a car, um, and not going out drinking, and not spending my money on foolish things, and also working very hard. Uh, that helps. So uh, work hard and prioritize. I mean, if this is what's important to you, maybe not buy a PlayStation 5, you know? And also, most of the gear that I have is sort of affordable. Uh, I've got a couple of amps that are quite pricey, like the Rocker Verb and the Mark 535 and stuff like that. And but I don't, I don't have a lot of expensive amps. Most of my amps were made in Asia, and that's why they're kind of affordable, relatively affordable. And the same goes for my guitars. I only have uh, one Gibson, and that's that's the most pricey guitar. And a lot of my guitars were made in Korea and. Um, yeah, most of them were made in Korea. My Ibanez 8-string was made in Indonesia, as well as that LTD that I showed in the beginning of the video. But um, 
so yeah, I don't buy a lot of expensive stuff. I mean, you could also have like 10 PRS guitars and three very expensive amps, and that would cost about the same. So I'm definitely not super rich. Work hard and uh, prioritize. I guess that's the main um, the main thing. But thanks for the question. And keep the questions coming, guys. Really appreciate it. And thanks for tuning in. And for all the guys that have just tuned in, Happy New Year to you guys. I wish you all the best for the next year. Uh, let's hope that it will be a more calm year with less stress and less craziness. That will be awesome. Okay, so I already talked about my LTD Phoenix, which is an awesome guitar. But uh, I will uh, talk about my Kemper as well later in the thing, if we get to that. Because I got a Kemper stage, guys. And it's really cool. I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, first, I want to answer a, a couple more questions. Um... Hi, Bravata Wildcat. Hi, John. I wanted to ask, how do you track your guitar in stereo? Do you have a mono to stereo splitter or stereo DI box? How do you track your guitar? Well, usually what I do is I track my um, my DI tracks with my Fractal Audio XFX3 because that's like a, a huge part of my setup. Um, and with that, I, already, I, I always just record the default DI track, so to speak. You can record them in mono, but I record them in stereo always. But trust me, it doesn't matter. You can also record in mono just fine. Otherwise, maybe um, maybe uh, make two mono tracks and you know make them into a stereo track or something. But uh, my XFX handles that automatically, basically. So that's one of the reasons why I've always done that. Thanks for the question, and thanks for tuning in. Stick around. Okay, next question. Otto van Schaik. Hey, Otto. Ooh, the new Westfall. Does that have the thin U? I believe it does. Yes, and th the funny thing about that is a bunch of my LTDs, uh, like those three here, the Eclipses, and uh, also the Phoenix that I showed earlier, they all have the thin U neck profile. Uh, as well as that Neil Westfall model. They all have that thin U neck profile, but they all feel different. They feel similar, but they're definitely not the same. Like the LTD Truckster, the Truckster model, has uh, probably the thinnest neck, and the shoulders of that neck are a little bit more, um, yeah, not it, not as smooth as the, as the others. The Neil Westfall neck has a very like smooth shape to it, and they all are just a little bit different. Like and the one, the neck on the EC1000T is the biggest probably. But it could be a coincidence. Um, yeah, I don't know how they make those guitars. Maybe they make them slightly by hand, you know, the neck shape. I'm not sure. But it, it's, it's a very, very comfortable guitar. I love that new Westfall LTD. Highly recommend it. It's awesome. Hi, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Fret wraps. That's right. Yes. Thanks for uh, for letting me know. Running running on empty. Can you do a test of the EVH EL3450? See how close it can get to a JCM800 and also a rectifier. Could be a cool idea. It's a great amp. It's a great amplifier. When you compare that amp to a JCM800, it has way more gain. It has, it has a ton of gain especially the red channel, it sounds very tight and aggressive, but also very thick, so tight and thick, if that makes sense. A lot of body, but very tight. Um, and the blue channel is more vintage -y, so it's a bit more um, saggy and a bit more soft, a bit more vintage sounding, but definitely also more gain than a JCM800. And the JCM800 tends to have a lot of bite in the upper mids. And the... Uh, EVH does not have that bite. So the EVH sounds a bit more modern and smooth in the upper mids and the, the treble region. And the rectifier is, of course, much more smooth. Uh, sorry, not smooth, but scooped. Much more scooped and has, it has a bigger low end. You know, when you play those palm mutes, jun, 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 it's more round and more uh, saggy in a way. Could be cool to compare them. Yeah. I have a great comparison coming up next week, by the way, guys, that I worked on. Um, it's a half hour long comparison of my Rockerverb 50, my dual rectifier, my PV6505, and my Marshall JVM 410H. So I wanted to do a sort of comparison comparison of all the big boys, so to speak. And I'm going to do clean, crunch, high gain, and baritone high gain clips in that one. And it's going to be awesome. So stay, stay tuned for that one as well. 
All right, I'm just going to continue because the, 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 uh, there are a lot of questions coming in. Um, same thing happens with Tremolo Springs, A J J S E J J S. Sorry. Yes, that's correct. And uh, what I do with my tremolo guitars is also usually put some foam in the tremolo cavity on the string, so on the springs, so that they don't resonate as much. Great one. Um, and Eric says I also use foam for my pickup containers. Yeah, I've I've also done that in the past, like. I've also put foam underneath pickups or, you know, uh, in the cavities to help them stay, stay put. That can help for feedback on stage. Bravata. I saw that you're attracted by the Torpedo Captor X. I have tried all the reactive loads in the market and the best signal that you can get are from the Sur reactive load and the Waza. Could be. I've heard good things about the Sur reactive load. I've heard good things about the Waza tube amp expander. Um, the idea that I like about the tube amp expander is the fact that you can dial in the resonance for all the different cabinets. Don't know if it would matter a lot, but it seems like a cool feature. And also that you can amplify your small tube amps to a very high level, 100 watts or something. That's a cool function. But yeah, the Captor X, I'm looking to get one soon and demo it on the channel and compare it to my um, Fractal Audio LB2, uh, which I have over here. My load box over here. I use that a lot with my amps. It's pretty solid and it sounds great. But uh, yeah, I want um, I want to know if there are some great sounds in the Captor X as well. So stay tuned for that on the channel as well. I'm going to continue with some questions here. Keep keep them coming, guys. Ask me anything. I'm up for it. I'm having fun. And I hope you guys are having fun as well. R. Scott Johnson asks, on your demos, do you triple track the guitars, panning hard left and right, and then one down in the center? No, I do not. Uh, I always put one at, on the left and always one on the right. I mean, I do lead stuff in the middle, but for the rhythm guitars, I like the, the stereo image to be very wide. And if you put a guitar in the middle, it kind of um, pulls the sides back into the middle a little bit, if that makes sense. I'm not saying it can sound awesome, but I, I don't like to do that. I, I prefer to have a separate sound on the right and a separate sound on the left, just to keep the, the sound extra wide, if that makes sense. But it can't hurt. I mean, it could sound great. George Stark, Guten Abend. Well, I'm not German, but I do know what that means. <laughs> Good evening to you too. Let's see. Hyper Hyperbole Kid asks, going to get an EVH Stealth 50 watt. Well, I don't think I need one, to be honest, and they're not cheap. I have this uh, 50 watt over there. I've got the LBX. I've got my 6505 and my 6505 MH. Those are all great. I mean, it would be a, an amazing amp to have, that EVH Stealth 50 watt. I just don't need it right now. So that's uh, kind of, you know, not anytime soon, but who knows? But who knows? Hello, John. L uh, Jay Larson. Hello, John. Really like the channel. What IR do you recommend for the Jazz Rivet in Helix? Hmm. Good question. Um, you know, for clean tones, I don't think it matters as much as with a distorted tone. I mean, clean tones tend to sound nice through a wide variety of cabinets. So to be honest, what I would use with, with that amp is just uh, like a 4x12 traditional Mesa Boogie cabinet or something. That would sound fine, to be honest. That's my answer, my short answer. Uh, okay, let me talk a little bit about my Kemper before we uh, go into the other questions. So I, uh, like I said earlier, I've got this Kemper stage here. I got this uh, last week. Check it out, my Kemper guys. Last week I asked you guys about this, and you all, and uh, a lot of you were like, "Yeah, get one, get one for the channel and stuff." Well, it has been it has been very awesome to have one here, and uh, I had one uh, like a toaster Kemper um, a couple of years ago. I think like four or five years ago, and I had it on the channel for a bit. And uh, back then, I really wasn't into tube amps that much I, I really was into modeling and, and all that stuff and I didn't really have a great time with it because I bought all these profiles and I tried all the free profiles but for some reason the sounds didn't really work for me um, there were 
always some weird frequencies going on in either the low end or, or in the top end or in the mid-range. It was always, always kind of weird. But now that I've built this collection of all these tube amplifiers, I thought, why not try it again? Why not get another Kemper and uh, maybe use it for some videos? I've, I, by the way, I've got a very cool idea about a video, about a ch little cheeky video. Uh, I thought of doing another blind test. I don't know if you've guys seen the other blind test, but I thought it would be funny to do a blind test. And I think I'm going to do that very soon. And I'm going to do four different sounds. I'm going to do my Marshall JCM 800 Studio, the Kemper, and I'm going to profile that amp into the Kemper, the Fractal Audio XFX3, and I might use the tone matching feet function, or I might not. I'm not sure yet because the amp models on the XFX obviously are quite accurate. So I don't know. Um, and then the Helix, of course. And then I'm going to do a blind test. I'm going to let you guys guess which one is which. Sounds fun, right? Anyway, so we've got the Kemper here. And I've uh, started profiling some amps. I've profiled my mini rectifier. I've profiled my orange gym root there just to see how that would work if it could do a great job of emulating uh, an orange. And today I also uh, profiled my MT15, my PRS MT15. And so far, I've been really impressed, really impressed. Um, the clean and crunch tones and the, the tones with uh, like a slight bit of breakup are, are, are very, very good. And the high gain tones are amazing as well, but they need a little bit more work with the refining process. So for example, when I profile on high gain amp, what I often notice is that the profile seems to have a little bit more gain, a little bit more saturation, especially on the palm muted notes than the real amp. So the real amp tends to sound a little bit tighter in the response usually. So what I then do is go back and turn down the gain on the amplifier a little bit so that the amplifier itself uh, has a little bit less gain than I want on the profile and that it sounds a little bit tighter. And then I profile again and do the refining thing and stuff and maybe dial in a slight bit of clarity and stuff. And then a lot of times it sounds super close, very close. So it's a lot of fun. And I'm making a bunch of different profiles. What I'm doing right now is I'm making all the profiles with the load box, which is working out awesome, by the way. I didn't know if that was going to be awesome, but it works out very, very well. And I'm making them direct so that I can either put the direct profiles through my XFX or Helix with the impulse responses, or I'm also making versions of these exact same profiles, but then with the cabinets loaded inside of the Kemper itself. And that also sounds great. So I'm just having a blast. And I'm looking to profile the JCM 800 Studio tomorrow to see how that sounds. And then I'm going to work on that uh, little blind test comparison for you guys very soon. That should be very interesting. So yeah, Kemper Stage, it's awesome. If you have any questions, uh, absolutely let me know. In general, if you have any questions about anything, just feel free to ask them. I'm just going to continue here and answer some questions. Let's see. Let's see. Where were we? Um, George Stark asks, was wondering for a while now, do you really only ever use your Laney Boost? No need for the others. Um, um, well... I don't use boost pedals that often. Um, I have a couple of great boost pedals. I have the Maxon OD808, which is, of course, you know, uh, a classic. I've got the Boss um, SD1, the yellow one uh, up there. I've got the Mud Killer, which is very cool as well, from the from the uh, Electric Eye Audio company. Um, I may have some other things that I, uh, the soul food as well, which is cool for a very transparent boost or which is also great for making clean channels sound like they're breaking up. Uh, but the steel bark, the Laney steel bark pedal is kind of like a tube screamer, but it has a little bit more controls <clears throat> and it has three voicings. So three different types of tones. So it's very versatile and um, yeah, you can lower the bass, which is great for metal and extended range tunings and stuff. Cause when you lower that bass control, can really make it sound a lot tighter. And if you raise the treble control, it gets more aggressive. So that's, it's, 
it has all the controls that I need. And I also think that Laney is a great um, company as well. So Eric and C. Shepard are asking me about my job, what I do for a living. Well, basically, this is what I do for a living. I also work for Ownhammer, as, as you guys probably already know. I'm a product specialist for Ownhammer, the best impulse response company in the world. I'm sure you already know that already, guys. Yeah, and my studio and uh, my YouTube, that's basically what I do for a living right now. I also did a lot of teaching in the past 10 years, but uh, now I'm focusing mainly on my studio work. Thanks for the question, guys. Okay, we're just going to continue. Um, Eric Weissbaum also asks, what do you think of Evertune? I just got one installed on my 8-string Prestige. Interesting question. I've never tried one. Um, they seem like great pieces of gear. Uh, I've also heard that they can affect the tone of your guitar a bit, that they can sort of make the sustain a bit less on a guitar. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't have a lot of tuning problems with my guitars, and I like to uh, just, you know, I don't know. I, want, I wanted to say bend my strings, but of course you can do that with an Evertune, but I don't know. They seem like great pieces of gear, and I, I, I can understand. I understand why people love to use them in their guitars, but for me, I haven't felt the need yet to, to try a guitar with an Evertune, but could be cool. Never say never. Going to continue with the questions. Uh, 2550 Marshall asks, what do you think about the neural quad cortex? Good question. People have asked me this before. Um, I, I'm not planning on buying one. Um, it seems like a great piece of kit that can do a lot, and it's, it has all these fancy features like the, the, the kind of the profiling thing and uh, tone matching stuff. I, I haven't look, really looked into that, to be honest, but I know that is, it has like a wireless Wi-Fi wi -Fi thing going on and, and that you can load your plugins into there. So it seems like a great unit, but... I already have an XFX, I already have my Helix and my HX Stomp, and now the Kemper as well, and a bunch of plugins, so I really don't need it. I'd love to try one, uh, demo one on the channel, but it's not something that I'm going to pay for, <laughs> to be very honest with you, but who knows? I know that all the big YouTube channels have gotten one, so I'm, I think my channel is a bit too small for them to... Uh, do anything with me, but who knows in the future. It seems like a great piece of gear. It has a lot of hype around it, but yeah, the current stuff that's out there already is very good already. So yeah. Um, let's see, let's continue. Otto asks, okay, one more question. How would you incorporate a fuzz slash HM2 sound with an EVH 5153 whilst regaining whilst reining it in with a gate and not losing the bite. How would you incorporate a fuzz? Well, I never really use fuzz pedals, so I'm not the best one to answer that question. I'm sorry about that. Maybe uh, you could ask this question to The Bun. You know The Bun? He's the, 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 YouTube, uh, the YouTube guy, the baritone uh, expert, Scott. He's awesome. He, uh, he's really into that filthy guitar tone with very low tunings and stuff. I would ask the bun, Scott, uh, about that. He, he might be able to give you a great answer. And he also uses the EVH amp, so he would be the best person to answer that question. So go to his channel and ask him, because he's awesome. He's a great guy, and I love his channel. Uh, let's see. Hello, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, as I said earlier, feel free to drop your questions here. I'm going to do my best to answer all of them. I'm going to find some more questions here. What's your top... Uh, Duo, Duo Q Life asks, what's your top recommendation for a hard rock guitar amp for a new touring band? Wow. That's a great question. What's your top recommendation for a hard rock guitar amp for a new touring band? Well, first of all, I hope touring comes back again because I really want to see some live shows again. Oh, man. But I'm sure you all feel the same. I've got tickets for Rammstein in, in Nijmegen, and I'm really looking forward to that, but I'm skeptical about if that will uh, go through. A hard rock guitar amp. Well, hard rock in, in what way? Um, is it like uh, 80s guitar hard rock, or is it like 
more like ACDC or something. I immediately think about Marshall when I hear the term hard rock. Yeah, maybe uh, if you want to, if you want a very versatile amp, maybe look into the Marshall JVM series and maybe check out the 210 JVM or the 410. The 410 is awesome, of course, because it has all these functions and all these channels. But the 210H is also supposed to be awesome. So maybe look for that. I mean, it's very versatile. It's a Marshall. It has that sound. It has a lot of functionality for playing live with the foot switch and stuff. That could be my rec recommendation. But of course, there are many other great options. Um, Orange. Orange is great as well if you're into that tone. Uh, you can't go wrong with a dual terror for hard rock. Or an orange dual terror, that's one of my favorite amps for, for like mid to high gain or low to high gain rock basically it's such a such a thick sound oh man so yeah maybe check out the orange dual terror which is only 30 watts and check out the marshall jvm 10 uh 210h or 410h for 100 watts and more of that marshall sound those you can't go wrong with uh, any of those they're awesome thanks for the question uh, let's see. I can't pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Hi from Russia. Say how to make the kill switch and kill switch engage guitar tone amp IRs and etc. Great question. I've been listening to some of their albums recently. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I think that they used Mesa Boogie amps in the past. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I, I think if you boost a rectifier and blend that with something like a 6505, could be could get you close. Or just a 6505 with a tube screamer, and maybe with a Mesa Boogie oversized cabinet. That could be that could be cool. That should get you kind of close. You could you could try stuff like an orange cabinet as well, or you know something like. Uh, um uh, like a diesel or something uh, like a very modern cabinet you know that would uh, that would be great and then yeah either like a boosted rectifier or a 6505 would be cool to get those kinds of tones uh, i know that they also used laney for a while the iron heart amps and i think that now they're using the uh, tony iomi amps i think so yeah look you can look into those as well but you, you'll need a tube screamer, I think, for those tones. I think they always use a tube screamer anyway. Hope that helps. Thanks for tuning in. Let's see. I'm going to try to answer more questions here. Oh, man. A lot of questions coming in. Thanks, guys. And thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all doing well. And uh, if, you're, if you're just uh, new to the chat and new to the live Q&A, Happy New Year to you guys. Best wishes to you. I hope you're. I hope that 2021 will be a great year for everybody. And thanks for all the support in the previous years. I really appreciate it. Okay, the guitar jam asks: Do you have any suggestions to help make transitioning between six and seven strings easier? Hmm. Not really. I mean, I would say play the seven string a lot, play it a lot, and also play some songs by bands that do play seven strings and uh, learn from their uh, techniques and learn from their chord shapes and stuff. I don't, I don't know if there's like an easy way to get used to a seven string. Um, you know, you just have to get used to it by doing it, getting in, in, in the grind, as they say, <laughs> or something. Yeah, just, um, just play it a lot, play it a lot, and... Uh, and listen and play songs by bands that use seven strings that uh, that could help the guitar them congrats on the new Kemper thanks Kemper stage right here it will be on the channel soon guys it's gonna be fun had the same experience with the Kemper says C Shepherd the sounds often the sounds often sounded weirdly muffled interesting hmm interesting in my case, they sound really nice, really accurate as well. Not 100% accurate on the high gain tones, but very close. But the refining process on the Kemper is very uh, important when you're profiling an amp. Sometimes it just, sometimes you play the wrong things at the refining process and then you have to reprofile the amp and then re-refine, re, uh, re if that makes sense, to make uh, the profile a bit more accurate. But uh, other than that, it sounds very accurate, I think. Max W. Hey, thanks for your very cool vids. I like it all. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see. 
Bravata would love to see a Mark 525 preamp into the loop of a Marshall video one of these days. I love the channel. I think you're referencing to Master of Puppets, aren't you? Could be cool. Could be interesting to try to mix and match preamps to certain power amps in the future. Could a cool idea. Could be something uh, fun to do. Travis says, I have an opportunity to get a Marshall JVM 205H for 800 bucks, but it's at 2008. How is the reliabi reliability on those amps? Would you trust it? I don't know. I don't know. I've heard some things that the earlier JVMs had some issues on the PCB. Um, but uh, my amp has been solid so far. And mine is an early one as well, but uh, I have one. I have one with a serial number that was higher than a certain uh, series of those amps that had had issues. So this mine is supposed to be one of the good ones. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe try it out and do some reading on the internet about it. Um, Eight hundred is in 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 Holland. You can get a four ten H for six fifty sometimes or seven hundred euros. So eight hundred for a two o five H. It's not very affordable, in my opinion, Travis. So maybe look further to, to see if you can get a 210H maybe or a, or 410H because those are awesome, awesome amps. Thanks for the question. Hyperbole Kid, going to be fun to seeing what you do with the camper. It's going to be fun. Yes, it's fun. A lot of fun. Uh, let's see, running on empty. Thank you very much for taking the time to answer these questions. Happy New Year to you too. I want a rectifier, but too expensive. What is the cheapest way to get that sound and get to get that sound? Any other amp pull off that sound? A rectifier is a very unique tone. Um, I don't know of any other amp that sounds like a rectifier. Well, Having said that, the Ukes and Kettner Tubemeister Deluxe 40 sounds kind of similar to a rectifier in a way. I would recommend checking out my uh, review demo of that amplifier because I also mentioned in that video that it sounds kind of like a Mesa Boogie rectifier. It has that scooped sound, but it's a bit more bitey, if that makes sense. You could check that out or check out a used mini rectifier because the mini rectifiers are really awesome. Nightwalker asks, are you going to sell your Kemper profiles? I'm not, I haven't decided on that yet. I, I'm not sure yet. Could be cool, could be fun. But I have to think about how I do that with the cabs and stuff. Maybe if I would do that, I would do direct profiles only so that you can, so that you guys can add your own impulses to the, to the profiles because it does sound amazing. I'm not sure yet. Of course, when I decide to do that, you guys will hear from me, obviously. Yes, Uvunu. Uv, uv. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Ovuno. Ah, you got a camper. Yes, I got a camper stage. It's so much fun, guys. I, I talked about this earlier in the stream, but uh, it's a, it's really... I mean, if you've, if you've got tube amps, then it's especially awesome because, um, yeah, then you can profile all your amps and put them in here and you know for a demo or a quick playthrough you don't have to grab your tube amp and let it warm up and stuff you just grab a profile add some effects and tweak the profile a little bit maybe you know add some definition add some compression and stuff it's just a really fun piece of gear i haven't even taken the plastic off yet so shall i do that look i'm gonna take off the plastic Woo, there it goes Yes, I really love the, the camper stage. And one little fun thing, like a fun little feature, is the tuner. Like there, there are these three LED lights next to the tuner uh, button. And uh, you can even tune your guitar without turning on the tuner with that. Really handy, really, really handy feature. Josh Castaneda recording. I really dig your content. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Okay. Hyperbole Kid, in my experience, the right cabs, IRs, for the camper are key. So I like the idea of getting your take on proper matching up of Ownhammer IRs to specific profiles. You have a great tone tweaking skill. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing along those lines. So if I end up selling my camper profiles, I think what I'll do is do the direct profiles 
and maybe do like an IR recommendation, you know, tell you guys like, oh, this profile was made with my uh, with the own hammer rectifier cabinet or something. And then you can then, of course, use your own impulses. But if you want like the perfectly voiced sound for that direct profile, you would have to probably get an own hammer uh, cabinet along with that. But I'm not sure yet. I'm thinking about that. Could be fun. Could be fun. Could be cool to share my tones with you guys. That would be awesome. Would love to hear the Axe Effects and Kemper comparison. Yes, it's going to be so much fun. It's got, I feel a bit. I feel a bit cheeky because with my last blind test, uh, well, it was a lot of fun because uh, you know there were a lot of uh, reactions from people who really knew. Yeah, that's the real amp because blah blah blah. And that's the Helix because of that artificial blah blah blah. And a lot of guys got it wrong, which is fun. It's always fun to, to to do those sort of things, and interesting. I mean, interesting to see how well people people really can hear the differences. I mean, people like to say that they they're really good at hearing all those differences, but when it when it you know when a blind test is there, it's uh, it becomes a lot harder. So, for for all you guys who have just tuned in, what I'm going to do very soon is do a bl another blind test, but a bigger one this time. And what I'm pro probably uh, going to do is. Uh, Go, uh, go use my uh, JCM 800 Studio, which is a mid-gain amp. It's not a high-gain amp. It's great for dynamic uh, mid-gain tones because a lot of people say, yeah, well, um, you know, uh, modelers are not as good at doing uh, mid-gain dynamic tones. They're better at doing high-gain tones. Anything can do that. Well, I, I don't think I agree. So I'm going to do a JCM 800 versus the Kemper. I'm going to profile that amplifier. And then I'm also going to make a preset on my Axe FX, all with the same impulse response or cap tone, of course. I'm going to tweak that to sound as close as possible to the real amp. And then also do the same thing for the Helix. And I'm going to do all those four sounds in a blind test and let you guys guess which one is which. Sounds like fun, eh? Coming to the channel soon, so stay tuned. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I'm going to answer a bit more, a couple more questions here. Hyperbole Kid, Kemper community is going to definitely want an, a Metallica pack from you with your great ability to nail those tones. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Well, that's a tough one because I mean, well, I've done the Metallica tones with my X effects, but, but that's, I mean, that platform lends itself very well to that because of the tone matching feature. And with a Kemper, I'm not sure if you can do tone matching from a record. Uh, and I also don't have a diesel VH4 yet. Fingers crossed. I would love one. Who knows? Could be cool. But right now, what excites me the most is just capturing all my amps into the Kemper without a lot of tweaking. So like the very pure and raw sounds of the amplifiers tweaked by me, of course. Uh, I mean, tweaked in the sense that I tweak the amplifier. Sometimes, sometimes what I'll do is with uh, the high gain stuff is make a couple different profiles for different pickups. For instance, the LTD Phoenix, it sounds a bit thicker. It has more weight than something like my Les Paul. My Les Paul has a bit more bite and clarity. And, uh, and, and then for example, if I take that Les Paul and make a high gain profile, I'll dial in the amp to sort of tame those upper mids a little bit and make it thick and chunky in the lows. But then with the Phoenix, which has a bit more body and, and low end, I do the opposite, you know, a little bit less low end and a bit more treble. So it can be interesting as well to uh, you know make profiles with different guitars. So I'm going to stick to that as well. Not a lot of guitars, because that would be crazy, but just a couple of guitars just to make uh, the high gain profiles, especially versatile, you know, have some tones in there. But very pure amp tones, not a lot of tweaking, you know, uh, just just capture my amps as close as possible. That's the goal, basically. Bravata, do you love Symphony X? Not really. Sorry, I did see them live once with the Dream Theater in Rotterdam. It was cool. They were very talented, great band but it's not really a band that I'm into. But uh, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, let's see. Andreas Bohm, I really enjoy the videos with you comparing the amp sounds, but I can only spot significant differences in the crunch sounds. That's what I was just talking about. So yeah, 
That is why for the next comparison, like I just talked about, I'm going to do my JCM 800 Studio. Likely, most likely, not entirely sure yet. But that's also one of those amps that is in all the modeling platforms. So that's um, you know one of the reasons why I wanted to do that. But also because it's a crunch amp, so it's going to be a bit more dynamic and stuff. So it's going to be, going to be interesting. Hello, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for all the questions. Keep them coming. I'll be here for a little while. Um, let's see. I guess we can expect tons of AMP profiles for Kemper coming from you. Don't see other reason for buying it. Well, I'm I, like I like I talked about earlier. I'm not entirely sure yet. It would be fun, but it's just I like gear and I like my AMPs and I like to experiment with stuff like this. This is my life. This is what I like to do. So it's not. I didn't buy it just to sell profiles. I'm not, I'm, I haven't decided on that yet. It's just a lot of fun to work with. And it's really fun to kind of clone your amps and put them in here. So that's the main thing that I'm doing right now is just experimenting and making a bunch of profiles. Let's see. What do you think? Uh, Schweiner, Schweiner Darl, Hackschwarte. I hope that I pronounced that sort of close. What do you think about Fortin? It seems, Fortin seems like a great company. Uh, they make some cool pedals. They're very popular, obviously. They make some great amps, I think. The the controversial thing about that little amp a while back was a bit eh, cringy, you know, about the standby thing, uh, the Fortin Sig Sigil, Sigil amp. But other than that, they seem great, but they are quite expensive. So I don't see myself buying a Fortin anytime soon, but it's a great company. I mean, I'd love to try something. Yeah. Maynard Coolidge, JVM has MIDI. Yes, that's correct. It's, it's a great, great function for, for playing live. Definitely. C Shepard also says, Killswitch and Gage used the Framus Cobra on their earlier stuff. Interesting. I did not know. Cool. Hmm. That's cool. Integrated rig is a must for the road. Integrated rig. Integrated rig. Hmm. You know, honestly, if I were to play live right now in a band, I would not probably, I wouldn't use a tube amp. I would probably either use my um, Kemper with uh, some profiles of my own amps on stage, or I would use my Helix Rack or HX Stomp in some way because I like the amp modeling of those a lot as well, and all the effects are great as well. Maybe I would even get like a, a Helix Floor to play live because it's just such a great unit to use live. But the Kemper is also the Kemper stage is also very cool. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe I wouldn't even use a tube amp on stage. Let's see. Let's see. Otto asks one more question. Do you blend amps and what would you recommend to complement an EVH 5153? Uh, I don't blend amps a lot. I don't. I, I tend to prefer like one amp per guitar tone because it stays a bit more pure. If you blend amps, I'm not saying that it sucks or that it sounds bad because obviously it works very well for tons of artists like Metallica and uh, you know the guy from Tool. I think. Although I have to say that the guitar tone on the new new Tool record, I heard a couple of songs and I wasn't really impressed. Because sometimes when you blend amplifiers, you get these sort of weird phasey artifacts that I don't really like. And they get in the way of the clarity and definition of the, the, sort of the grain of the distortion, so to speak. But if I were to blend an EVH 5153, which is a very like tight sounding amplifier, I probably would blend it with something like a rectifier or maybe something a bit more vintage sounding like a Marshall. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. But thanks for the question again, Otto. Otto. Uh, Josh asks, what are some other channels you enjoy? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I, I watch a lot of stuff. A couple of buddies of mine are Nick Hill. You need to check him out if you're into metal guitar tones and, or especially if you're into the Helix and metal. He's a great guy, great channel. And like I said earlier, I also really love The Bun. 
the the baritone channel scott is a really great guy and he's really into the low stuff and he both those guys make great videos so go check those guys out definitely uh but um i, I watch a lot of random stuff uh but what I also like to do, and this may sound a bit crazy, it has nothing to do with music, but I'm a huge fan of New York, the city of New York. And what I like to do to unwind at night before I go to bed is like watch uh, videos where people walk through Manhattan and stuff. <laughs> it sounds very stupid maybe, but it's very relaxing to me. So uh, that's stuff that I watch as well. And what I also uh, re discovered recently was this, was this channel called Scammer Payback. It's this uh, guy that uh, it's sort of a hacker, and he um, he uh, he uh, goes uh, yeah he 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 punishes uh, like the scammers, which is awesome, which is awesome. I, I'm not a hacker or anything like that myself, but it, that was really enjoyable as well. Thanks for the question, Dimos Den. Iniquity. Kemper, I'm overwhelmed with all the sounds and I couldn't resist buying a few packs. How do you start find, to find the right tone? I'm doing black metal. Any recommendations? Thanks and a happy new year to you. Happy new year. A happy new year to you too. Well, I did talk about this earlier in the uh, live stream, but um, I know what you mean. Uh, and, I, and like I said earlier, I, all, I also had a uh, Kemper toaster a couple of years back before I had uh, these tube amps. Because back then I was really into modeling, and I and I felt like that I, that I should get a Kemper because that was one of the big ones, you know. And I bought a bunch of profiles from a bunch of different uh, studios and stuff, but I had a really hard time to to get some tones that were solid to me. But now that I have all these amplifiers, I thought that it was a great moment for me to finally get get myself uh, a Kemper, and now suddenly it all makes sense. You know what I mean? Um, but that's just my personal experience. Um, I don't know. I may, I don't know how to find the right one. I, I guess it's, uh, it's, uh, you, you have to experiment a little bit and maybe try some of the free packs and see if there are some guys out there that make sounds that work for you. For me, what has really worked well so far is making direct profiles without a cab sound and then adding IRs later. That sounds, sounds so good. And the added flexibility of that, because the fact that you can change the cabinets and that it will sound way more natural than when you change a cabinet on a uh, studio profile, that's just awesome for me. So yeah, I would maybe recommend checking out some direct profiles and loading up your own impulse responses. I mean, sometimes the Kemper world tends to forget the power of an impulse response, You know, the, the power that you get with that, the, the flexibility of tone. And a lot of a lot of the tone can change if you use a different type of cab. And with the direct profiles, you know that the amp tone is sort of pure, you know, unaffected by anything, you know, any frequency response from the cabinet. And then you can just load up your own impulses. That's probably my uh, main tip. So yeah, I hope that helps. And uh, thanks for the question. And 2550 Marshall says, in my experience, the Kemper is more accurate using a mic and a cab for profiling. I know that some people have said that, but trust me, I've gotten, I've gotten some cra crazy accurate results with my load box setup. It works amazingly well. So yeah, that's just my experience, but you'll get to hear that soon enough, especially in that blind test comparison that I'm going to do soon, that cheeky blind test. Let's see. Travis says, I screwed up. It was a 210H, the Marshall JVM. Great amp. 800 is still kind of steep in Holland, that is. Maybe in the States or wherever you're from, it's more uh, it's more of a normal price for a Marshall JVM. Could be. I don't know. But maybe look at the prices in the market and see what's a normal price for a JVM. In Holland here, I would not pay more than 700 euros for a 210H, to be honest. Let's see. Ovuno says, I could never find a good high gain profile for the Kemper and for every profile it felt too compressed and that cocked wah high mid frequencies was always present, sold it in the end. That kind of echoes my earlier experience from years ago, but right now with my own direct profiles, I've never, I haven't had that cocked wah thing at all. No, 
So I'm not sure uh, what the problem was there. Jonathan says, Happy New Year. What's your opinion on the, ha, the, the quad cortex? I already answered that question earlier. It seems like a cool unit. I haven't, I don't have any plans to get one, but it seems like a very cool unit, but I don't really need one because of uh, the fact that I already have my Helix rack, my XFX, and right now the camper as well. Looks like a really cool piece of kit, but yeah. I mean, it has a lot of modern features like the the Wi-Fi and the plug-in loading and all that stuff. Seems really cool, but right now I'm not really um, getting on the hype train, so to speak. Uh, Sam Soriano, do you have a red special? A red special? What's that again? Let's let me Google that for a second. Red special guitar. What's that again? Let's see. No, I do not. I do not have a red special. I'm not the biggest Brian May fan. I think he's amazing. Uh, I saw him live once, but it's not really my thing. So, um, you, thanks for the question, though. Aaron Buckrell says, John, love your videos and your Helix knowledge has helped me many times. Thank you so much. Uh, in that case, I also really recommend checking out Nick Hill's channel because he's awesome. Next question. Let's see. What kind of uh, pro pro vid pro vid? <laughs> what kind of audio interface you use for your recordings in Cubase? Great question. I use a couple of things, but usually what I like to use is just my XFX3 because uh, it's sort of the centerpiece of my uh, studio rig here. It's uh, it has a lot of inputs and outputs, and I can route everything through it. It's not perfect. It has some flaws which can be a little bit annoying sometimes. Sometimes the audio, the USB audio drops out like that and then I have to restart the computer and the XFX. And I've also had some issues where uh, the recorded tracks weren't perfectly aligned on the grid and I had to uh, enable this feature in Cubase where there's like uh, an offset. So I had to measure the offset. I recorded a click through the XFX and then measured the, lat the latency and then put that offset in the uh, the offset uh, sort of thing to make sure that it uh, records right on time. So that's a weird issue that I've had. But other than that, it's a great piece of gear that allows me to route everything uh, through it. And it's a very flexible interface for me, especially for recording guitars and stuff and recording the eye tracks along with either tube amp tones or modeling tones or whatever, because I always want to record my DI tracks along with any other processed sound. But of course, the Helix is great as well. So I use that uh, sometimes as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ovonu, <laughs> sorry that I'm pronouncing your, your name wrong. Using IRs with the Kemper is just wrong, to be honest. Well, I, I don't agree with you at all. It For me, it has worked out splendidly, splendidly, splendid. It works out really well for me. It sounds amazing in my opinion, but that's that's just my personal opinion. In fact, I would go I would go further and say that it's a shame not to use IRs with a camper, but try to use them with direct profiles. That's my opinion, of course. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's see. Eric Anders as a, says as a reply to an earlier earlier question, Tone City Model B pedal is a decent rectifier sound for pennies on the dollar. So if you're looking for a rectifier pedal, maybe look into that. But you can't go wrong with the Mason Boogie Mini Rectifier. It's such a killer amp. Love the blind test videos, Aaron. Thank you, thank you. And this next one that I talked about is gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be so much fun. Oh, it's gonna be fun to read the comments and stuff. Maybe I should do some sort of poll this time. I don't know how to do that technically, you know, because I've got four different sounds. I've got the amp. I'm going to do the Kemper, of course, the Axe FX and the Helix. How how would I do a poll? I would have to think about that. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Greg Kyoso, hey, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year to you, too. FRFR question, thinking of going for an 1x12 cabinet and add a Celestion F12 X200 the speaker is made for modelers and power amps with an amp 
this cab with an orange pedal baby worth it? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't have any experience with that. I'm sorry. I would not quickly get a 1x12 for heavy music, that is. For heavy music, I would uh, go for a 2x12 or something. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. Make sure to post that blind test on the Marshall Forum. 2550 Marshall says, yes, I'm definitely planning on doing that. Thank you. Great idea. Uh, make sure the guitars are isolated, please, in the test. Of course, yeah, of course. No worries. We're going to get into that. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Another question that I've answered earlier, Constantine M, where you get so much money for, your, for all your stuff? Well, I did an answer about this earlier, but basically prior, prioritize, get your priorities straight. Don't go out drinking and waste your money on alcohol. Don't smoke cigarettes and don't drive a car. Don't buy a car. That helps. That helps. Don't buy sorts of. Don't buy all these crazy things that you don't need. <laughs> if you uh, if you'd rather buy gear, if that makes sense. Thanks for the question, though. And thanks for tuning in. Bravata, bravata, Wildcat. Would love to see you grab a Wizard Modern Classic amp to your collection. These are amazing. Thanks for answering our questions, John. Love those live sessions. Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm having a blast as well. I really enjoy these live streams. A wizard would be great. Is that the one that uh, James Hetfield used on uh, Garage Garage Inc? Seems like a very cool amp, but they're not cheap. So, yeah, I'm not in a position right now where I can buy very expensive amplifiers. So, yeah, who knows for the future? Hyperbole Kid says, please make some profiles with your PRS SC baritones. You influenced me to get one. They rule. Good to know. Good to know. What at first, what I will do first is try the profiles that I made with various guitars to see how much um, trying a different guitar through one profile affects the tone. Because if if I notice, for example, that um, a profile sounds very different with a baritone guitar. Um, then I might have might have to make some special profiles for baritone guitars or something like that. Could be could be interesting, by the way, when I think of that, like make a profile pack just for baritone guitars. But first, I have to decide if I'm gonna sell profiles at all. So that's something I have to think about. But could be cool, yeah. And those PRS SC baritones are awesome. I love them. Yes, great guitars. Hayden Brown. Hey, John. Love your videos. Your helic tones are amazing. Much love from Scotland. Thanks, Hayden. Thank you. I appreciate it. I want to visit Scotland soon. I love Scotland. It's awesome. Eric Anders. I can't wait for that ultimate comparison video. You mean the, the comparison of the big amps or the, the blind test? I can't wait for either. So next week, guys, I have an awesome video coming out. It's a comparison between four big amps, four, my Orange Rockover 50, my PV6505, my Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier, and my Marshall JVM 410H. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be out next week. It's about a half an hour long, so it's quite in-depth. I'm going to do clean tones. I'm going to do a crunch tones. I'm going to do high gain tones with a passive pickup and also high gain tones with a baritone with EMGs. And then I'm going to do that comparison uh, like in the mix and also isolated and the isolated sections will have a version with the same IRs. So with all the amps going through the same IRs and also that same AB comparison, but with unique IRs. So you, you guys can hear the difference as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's see. Uh, Bravata, do you know how to use blend the room mid rear IR available in the own hammer libraries with the main IR? Well, sure. You need to use an IR loader th that allows you to blend impulse responses, obviously. And what I would do is load up the main IR and then slowly, carefully blend in the, the room or rear or mid IR until you feel that it's adding something that you like is adding some sort of room resonance to the IR. But be careful, because otherwise it, it can get very roomy and kind of weird sounding, because, because those IRs are really meant for blending or for crazy effects, of course. But that's what I would recommend. 
take a, an IR loader, loader plugin, something like Cab Lab from Fractal Audio, or um, you know, uh, I like to use Nadir sometimes, or um, the other one from uh, Ignite. I forgot the name, but something that allows you to blend impulse responses and then slowly bring in the room IR until you uh, get this get a sound that you like. That's my advice. Thanks for the question. Let's see. Eric Ander says, if you can include the neural Omega plugin in the Mega comparison video, that would kick ass because it's one of the best high gain plugins out. I can't tell the difference. Is that a JCM 800? I'm not sure uh, if, if I'm going to do that. I mean, it's it seems like a cool plugin and all those neural DSP plugins are great. But uh, I really want to use a simulation that really, really emulates a JCM 800. And if I use more than, I mean, four is already cra a crazy amount for people to blind, to, to guess blindly, because that's what I'm going to do, obviously, let people guess which one is the real amp, which one is the Kemper, which one is the XFX, and which one is the Helix. And if I add more, it's going to be way too much. So I don't think I'm going to do that this time, to be honest. But thanks for the suggestion. More questions. Chris Berger. Hi, John. I want to thank you for the amp reviews. It did assist me in buying the Laney Ironheart IRT120H amp and love the versatility of the amp. Did you ever play on the Laney Lionheart amp range? I have never played on that amp. I'd love to, though. I think it's a more uh, low gain to mid gain type amplifier, kind of like a Fox ish. I've never tried one, but they look classy and they look cool. So I hope that one day I will I will be able to try one. By the way, hi guys for for all of you that, you that have tuned in right now just now. Happy New Year to you guys. The best wishes to you. If you have any questions, drop them here. I'm gonna keep on streaming until there are no questions left. So drop them. Let's see. Oh, by the way, yeah, the, 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 Lion, the Iron Heart amps are great. I hope you enjoy that 120H. Great amp. Very cool. Anteas, good evening. Happy New Year. Please, what do you think about Bugera 6262? I have my Triple X, which has just burnt down, and I don't have the money to buy the 6505 Plus, uh, on which the 6262 seems to be based. I assume that's what you want to say. What do you think about the lifespan, bias adjustment, etc.? To be honest, I've never tried a Bugera amp. They seem to sound pretty good, but I've heard some, you know, bad stories about uh, quality and stuff. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it works, it works. But I've never tried one, so I can't really give an opinion on that. To be honest, so I'm sorry that I can't uh, give you uh, like a proper, proper answer, but. Uh, Try one in a store. That would be the best option, I think. Good luck with that. Thanks for the question. OK, next question. Mark Muller, can you play metal with a Marshall SV20 by boosting it with pedals? It interests me. Great question. Um, the Marshall SV20H is probably the one of the amps in my collection that is uh, like the least good at metal because it's really a vintage sounding amplifier and it relies very much on, I think, on power tube distortion. I'm not really sure how that works, but it's, uh, it had, it's very vintage voiced. And uh, the JCM 800 has a bit more gain and a bit more bite, uh, the JCM 800 Studio, so the SC20H. So I would, I would probably recommend that one first, but keep in mind that that one does require a boost for high gain metal. The SV20H is amazing for, you know, vintage plexi type tones and vintage rock and roll tones. It's really great at that. Keep in mind that it's very loud, though, very loud amplifier. But uh, I would I would recommend the, uh, the SC20H before that one for metal. It, it sounds uh, much better for metal with a good boost, in my opinion. Let's see. Um... Happy New Year, Billy. Welcome to the to the live stream and Happy New Year to you too. Thanks for tuning in. Mark also says, Happy New Year. You are great. You're, you create the best amp comparisons. Thank you. Best channel, heart. I love you too. Thanks for tuning in. Um, 
Ovonu, wonder if you're sponsored by Line 6. I'm not, actually, but I used to be when I played in my old band. I played in a Dutch band called Intwine. There's a poster back there. And uh, back in the day, I had like a proper Line 6 endorsement. I played on the FEDA 2 amps on stage. I had, uh, at, at one time, I had two FEDA 2 amps and two 4x12s. That was pretty cool rig. And it only had that big foot switch, and I would turn up and just plug it in, and boom, there it was. And my and the other guitar player had like a, two Bogner amps together in a really complex setup, and then a big pedal board with all these pedals, and they would have issues all the time with noise and the signal cutting out and stuff. And I was always like, I just rolled into the venue with my Fedas and plugged in, and boom, I would I had a great time with that. But right now, I'm I'm friends with some of the Line Six guys, I guess you could say. But I'm not. Um, I'm not endorsed. New. No. Running, running on empty. Eric, blah blah blah. Yes, thank you guys. Let's see. Use Mercurial Spark, best Marshall sim in my opinion. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a great one. It doesn't sound exactly like my Marshall, the JCM800, but it sounds pretty Marshally. Pretty. It sounds pretty close. Keep the questions coming, guys, because I'm going to stick around for a little bit here to answer some more questions. Do you have a favorite amp for metal in the Helix? Line 6 Badonk was a good surprise since it's not a real amp. I like the Angle Meteor. Aaron Buckrell asks that. My favorite amp in the Helix for metal is the Badonk. It's amazing. It's tight. It's huge. It has a nice mid-range. I really love that amp. Be sure to turn down the depth all the way to begin with and be careful with the bass control as well because it has a huge low end. Uh, other than that, um, I also like to use the uh, the benzene amp models, which are great. I like the diesel sound, not very tight. They're more warm sounding with more mid-range and stuff, but uh, the Badonk is very hard to beat. Michael Van Gelder of... Michael van Gelder, how is living in Holland? Living in Holland is quite nice. Um, yeah, I've been born here. I was born here and I've, I've lived here for all my life and I really like it here. It's not perfect, but which country is perfect? But it's calm, there's no war, you know, no stuff like that. And there is not a lot of terrorism and stuff going on here. It's a very nice country to live in. The, I do miss mountains and forests and stuff a little bit sometimes, you know, when I go to beautiful countries like Great Britain and stuff and Scotland as well. I really love the mountains and the nature and all the, you know, the old like castles and stuff. I really love that. And sometimes I do miss that in Holland a little bit, but that's just a little thing. Holland is a very nice country to live in, in my opinion. Can Gilmaz, your amp demos are the best on YouTube. Thank you for that. Thank you. I'm planning to get a 20 or 15 watt high gain amp. MT15, Mini Rectifier, EVH 1513 are on the list. What is your recommendation? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. The amps that you mentioned are all great. Um, I'm not sure which one to recommend to you because it, it really depends on your preference, but I'll go through the amps and kind of talk, talk about them for a little bit. The MT15 is a very solid amplifier and it's very affordable. It has six or six tubes in the power section, so it can get pretty loud without going flubby, if, if you know what I mean. Um, the clean channel is very clean. You won't be able to get a very, you know, like a crunchy clean tone out of that. It's very clean. And the high gain tone is very nice, very, um, very much in between a lot of different amp tones, so in between, somewhere in between a rectifier and a Marshall. So it sounds kind of like a 6505 in a way, but it doesn't do crunch tones very well. So if you like classic rock crunch tones, this is not the best one to get. And then um, the mini rectifier, the mini rectifier is great. It's very tiny. I love that amplifier. I'm just a huge fan of the Mesa rectifier tone. Um, it is very versatile as well. It can do great clean tones. It can, can do some very nice crunch tones. But most importantly, it does that modern Mesa Boogie rectifier tone. It's 25 watts. Uh, I, have, I haven't played that one live or anything like that. So it's hard to say if it can go loud, loud enough for gigs. 
But for studio use or home use, the mini rectifier is awesome. One tip, if you, uh, if you want to play that amplifier on a low level at home, be sure to, especially for the, for the high gain channel, be sure to set it to 10 watts because it makes the amp sound a bit warmer. And uh, the, the modern mode on 25 watts can sound a little bit brittle on lower levels. So keep that in mind. And the EVH 5153, I only have the LBX1, which is the version with the blue and red channels. So uh, no clean channel. That's not ideal. If you don't want a clean channel, that's fine. But the stealth could be probably, um, could be cool. But like the awesome thing about the AVH amps, which is also kind of one of its weaknesses is the tone because it's very like uh, tight and aggressive sounding, but it's really hard to make it sound not tight, if you know what I mean. It's kind of hard to make it sound a bit more vintage or to sound it big like a rectifier. You can't really do that on an EVH, but with a mini rectifier or the MT-15, you could use a boost to make it sound tighter. So the EVH is probably not the most versatile option. Uh, and someone else right now, Super Gigawatt says, Definitely, uh, the mini rectifier is definitely loud enough. Good to know. Yeah, the mini rectifier is such an awesome amplifier. It's hard to beat. I really love it. And uh, as I talked about earlier, I did profile the mini rectifier this week. A bunch of different settings, all the channels, all the modes and stuff. And it sounds just so huge. It doesn't sound like a mini amp at all. And that's what I love about the mini rectifier. Let's see. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Super Gigawatt. That reminds me of Back to the Future, by the way. Gigawatts, whatever he says in that movie. 21 gigawatts. What is a good price for a Marshall JVM 210 and or a 420? Well, it depends on where you live. Um, I know that some amplifiers can be a lot, a lot more expensive in the States, for example, like the Laney amps and the Orange amps and stuff. Those are a bit more pricey in the States. Uh, but in Holland, you sometimes see the 210H pop up for like, uh, you know, even like for 550 or 600 euros. And the 410, I, I, I've seen them from time to time for about 650 euros or 700. So if you're somewhere in Europe, I would not pay a lot more than that. In the States or something, I would not know how, uh, how those are priced over there. I hope that helps. Thanks for the question. Ovunu, which of the modelers has the best feel to it? Feel, that topic. Yeah, it's a hard topic because feel, I, I, I don't really believe that feel is a thing at all. Uh, I don't know if I want to get into that too much, but uh, it's more of a, it's a different, uh, yeah, it's just a different interpretation. I interpret that in a different way. Feel to me is you know, something that you actually feel, something that you're actually, um, let's see, perceiving. You know, you can feel something when you're touching it and you can hear your guitar when you play it, but there's no such thing as feeling what is what is coming out of the amplifier. It's just frequency response and dynamic, dynamic frequency response, basically. And... Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, all the modelers that I have feel great. They feel great to play. They feel great. They sound great. They react great. I don't know. In my opinion, they all sound and feel great, to be honest. Yeah. Thanks for the question, though. Bravata would love to buy the Ownhammer Workhorse V30 library. Will it be available for non-Helix users? I mean, the, in wave in the wave format. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Um, I'm. I don't think so. I'm not the person who decides on that because that's um, Kevin from Ownhammer, the guy who creates everything. He is the person who decides that. But uh, I think it's a, a Helix. Um, it's a pack only for Helix users. I think, and it sounds amazing with the Helix. By the way. Super Gigawatt, have you ever tried a Bedrock amp? I have never. I have never even heard of that brand. Shame on me. There are so many amp brands out there that I've never heard of or have tried amps from, but um, I don't know. Yeah. Could be interesting to uh, look into that. 
Michael van Gelder, looking looking to visit after pandemic to see my homeland of Gelderland. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it would be great to travel more again once this virus has uh, been, you know, tempered a little bit. But not let. But let's not get into that too much today. Uh, let's see more questions. Thanks, guys, for all the questions. I really appreciate it, and thanks for keeping this live stream alive because of the questions. Without the questions, I would have been uh, gone long. I would have been long gone. <laughs> so thanks a lot for sticking around and hanging out. Running on empty asks JCM Mini versus JMP One. Great question. Well, you know, they're both very different. The JCM Mini is, of course, a full-fledged tube amplifier, and the JMP1 is only a preamp. So, yeah, so I guess that you're asking about the tone. The JMP1 is great for uh, modern, more modern tones, I guess you could say. It has, it has more gain. The JCM Mini doesn't have a lot of gain. It's really a mid-gain crunch amp. And the JMP1 can do clean, crunch, and high gain. So it's a bit more versatile. Um, yeah, so that's basically my main opinion on that. The JCM800 Studio or the Mini sounds really good. It really sounds like a JCM800. It, it really has that bite and bark and, and stuff and that cut, that rock and roll cut. But the JMP1 is much better at more modern tones i guess you could say it's not super modern sounding but uh, it has a lot more gain than the jcm 800s i hope that helps thanks for the question and ovonu asks can dark terror a dual terror do sv20h sounds kind of in the ballpark sv20h sounds very vintage rock and roll and the dual terror uh, which i talked about earlier as well is one of my favorite amps for you know, mid-gain crunch rock tones. And it can also do high gain as well. It's a, it's kind of a warm sounding amp, especially on the fat channel. But it's, it, won't, it will never sound exactly like a SV20H. It will sound like an orange, but it's a great amplifier for low to mid-gain tones. Absolutely amazing. I highly recommend checking out the Dual Terror. It's really cool. And by the way, the SV20H is amazing, but it, it has to go really loud in order to sound good, in order to get some gain from it. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And I don't think that it has an FX loop as well. Uh, let's see, 2550 Marshall, ever tried a BBE Sonic Maximizer behind your JMP1? No, I have not. I've never even tried one of those BBE Sonic Maximizers. And I've heard some, uh, I've, I've, I've heard some mixed opinions about that thing as well. I don't know. Could be cool. I don't know. I have no idea. Ovo, Ovonu, Ovono, sorry if I'm, I keep pronouncing your name wrong. I'm sorry about that. Which amp would you recommend to get the sound of Refused has? I've heard that they used AC30s and JM's, JCM800 combos. I'm not uh, familiar with that band at all, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm not sure if I can answer that for you. AC30s, I don't have any Fox amps myself. And JCM800 is awesome, of course. Maybe, maybe look into something like the Silver Jubilee because it does that JCM800 tone, but it does, it also does a really nice and warm crunch and clean tone that has a bit more body and roundness to it, kind of like a Fox ish, but of course, more with a martial tone. Let's see. Philip Anderson, have you tried the Eminence DV77? It has replaced the V30 in my Helix as of right now. I have not. No, but I would love to try that one. I've been hearing great stuff about the Eminence speakers. They're quite popular right now, I think. Hmm. Uh, Super Gigawatt says, I live in the USA. Ah, you asked about the Marshall heads, right? Well, yeah, look into the used market and see uh, how much they go for. Mark Muller, I'm going to buy a Marshall. I love Led Zeppelin. The SV20 is perfect for this. Yes, that's correct. But Van Halen and Metallica too, they use a lot of gain. Because of that, I have doubt about 
the Marshall SV20. Yeah, I know what you mean. I wouldn't play Metallica on an SV20H, to be honest. Van Halen, I'm not an expert on Van Halen at all, but I guess with a good boost, you could get some Van Halen-y tones out of it. Uh, if you if you want to get an old school Metallica sound, you could use an S uh, like an SC20H or the Silver Jubilee Mini because it's a bit more versatile and it has a bit more gain on tap. But maybe you would have to experiment with some pedals to get a little bit more, you know, bite or or tightness out of it for certain tones. I hope that helps to answer your question. Um. Let's see. <laughs> Tim, uh, when is the Primal Rage reunion happening? Awesome. I don't know if you're still online, but that's a great question. That was such an awesome band. We toured the world. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Tim is my brother, by the way. He's probably watching right now, which is a little bit, it's a little bit uh, awkward because now I have to act normal and stuff. <laughs> Just joking. Super Gigawatt. P.S. I love your show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mark Muller, thanks. The 20. Can I play Metallica with it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's. I just talked about that. Let's see. Sven Jeska, what amp is number one on your wish list? Great question. And I have a great answer for you a diesel VH4. I would love to have a diesel VH4. That seems like an awesome amp. Yeah, I would love that one. That's number one on my wish list. Seems like such a cool amplifier, but they're not affordable. As uh, the VH, VH2 seems like a very cool amplifier as well. Um, so yeah, but uh, I would love a diesel. I would love a diesel, yes. Uh, I should check out Refused. I think you will like them a lot. Okay, I'll check them out soon. Thanks. Mark Muller asks, how many Gibsons did you have? And I, if if have some, can you compare some of those? Okay, sure. Um, uh, I've had two Les Paul Classics, but the earlier ones from the 2000s. Um, so th and those were great. Those were great. I also had a, a standard Faded. It was also great, but it was... A lot, a lot lighter, so it was very resonant, but it did not have that thick body that I like about Les Pauls. I also had a Les Paul Menace at one time, but it had a horrible neck dive, so I sold that quite quickly. I also had a Les Paul Custom, which was a very nice instrument, uh, but the Les Paul Classics that I also had, those had a bit more personality to them. They had a bit more bite and sort of attitude to their tone, and the the custom sounded a bit more refined. Having said that, if I were to buy or get an LS ball anytime in the future, I would get a custom because they're just so classy and they're th thick. They have a big sound. And of course, right now, I only have my LS ball classic 2015 back there, which is just a very, very great guitar, very well built, a very nice sound. So if you compare... Uh, if, if I can compare those, well, if for a classic Les Paul sound with a lot of bite and clarity, check out a Les Paul Classic, for example, or a Les Paul Standard. And for something a bit more refined with a bit more body, perhaps check out uh, a Les Paul Custom. That's like the only the only way I can answer that for you. Super Gigawatt, thank you for answering my questions. No problem. Thanks for asking them. And by the way, keep the questions coming, guys. Um, I'm prepared to stick around for a little bit. Thank you for answering. What are your thoughts on the Marshall Origin series? Uh, I had an Origin 50 uh, a couple of years ago. I had it, but I, I sent it back because it just didn't do it for me. Um, sorry about that. I didn't have enough gain for me. I wanted something. Back then, I didn't have any Marshalls, and I wanted one for that classic Marshall sound, and I ended up ordering an Origin, but it didn't have enough gain, and it sounded a bit, I don't know, it sounded a bit off to me. Maybe I had a dud or something. So I'm sorry that I can't, um, yeah, really um, help you with that. 
Said Rajabi. I ha Hi, I have a Kemper profiler. Which profiles do you re recommend to have Joe Cetriani tones? Do you have any? Thanks. I'm not sure. I don't know. I haven't tried any commercial profiles in a long time. As I talked about earlier, right now what I'm doing is just uh, profiling my own amps and making some profiles myself. So I can't really comment on that right now. Sorry. Have you tried the SV20H with an attenuator like the Boss Waza tube expander? Wonder if it retains the sweet spot sound with them. I haven't tried the Boss Waza tube expander at all. I would love to try one. They seem like very cool units, but uh, my Fractal Audio LB2 over here does the job quite well. So for now, I'm not looking to get a tube amp expander. I am looking to get a uh, Two Notes Captor X soon, though which uh, should be cool just to have another load box to try and uh, experiment with and compare to my LB2. So yeah, I hope that kind of helps to answer your question. Tim says, my brother, Tim, tell the folks here about your backstage time with the Metallica gear. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me show you guys something. This is me with my brother backstage at a Metallica show. And this is uh, James's guitar. And this is my brother. And this is me. And we were at um, uh, <laughs> that show in Copenhagen. Yes. And that was a show a couple of years ago where James had really had a really, really strained voice. He was a bit sick. And um, and he, uh, he, 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 he his voice was sounding pretty messed up. And he... Uh, he said, like, yeah, my voice is fucked up. I want to stop. You guys want us to stop. And we were like, no. So they did continue the show with a very strained voice. But it was an awesome show, of course. And But before the show, we went backstage and uh, checked out the gear, which I also did in 2014 on the Pink Pop Festival. I also uh, tried their XFX rigs and stuff. And that was a lot of fun really cool to be able to touch their instruments, so to speak, and to talk some of the crew and stuff. Really cool, great, amazing experience. And it was cool to have my bro there in uh, Copenhagen as well. So yeah, amazing, amazing night. Yeah. If you guys have any questions about that, by the way, feel free to ask them as well. <clears throat> Let's see, Bravata Wildcat, I would love to see old pieces of gear on your channel, like used ADA MP1 or Mesa Boogie Studio pre-quad PV Bandit. PV Bandit, that's funny. Looking forward to for new stuff on the channel. Uh, ADA MP1 would be cool to have on the channel, sure. And the Boogie Studio preamp seems like a cool thing as well. And they're not super expensive here, so that's something that could be a reality one day in the future. It would be great. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay, let's see. Running on empty. Hughes and Kettner Deluxe 40, you recommended. Does the 18 or other wattage Grandmeister heads have the same tones? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I would expect them to have the same tones, but they have less features. But the Tube Meister Deluxe sounds a bit different, I think, than my uh, Grand Meister Deluxe. So there are probably some differences there. Not so much in the crunch and clean channels, but in the high gain channels, yes. It's uh, hard to say if they're how 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 alike they are. Sven, have you heard about the Diesel VHX analog tube and with digital controls and effects? Looks amazing, and I like the best of both worlds, digital and analog concept. Not cheap, though. I have heard about that amp. It seems like a very fancy and expensive amp indeed. As I said earlier, I would love to have a diesel amp in the future, uh, but I don't see myself getting that VHX because it's just too pricey. But it's it seems like a very cool amp, of course, yeah. Mark says, thanks for replying my questions. Well, thank you for asking me questions. I really appreciate you tuning in. Let's see. Marco, hi, John. Nice to see you live. Nice to see you here as well. Thanks for tuning in and a happy new year to you. Uh -huh. 
Bravado Wildcat, can you tell us how you came to create the Sonic Drive Studio channel? What is the history? Great question. Um, let's go back a couple of years in my head. Well, uh, at first, like, uh, I don't know how many years ago this was, but about five years ago or so, I used to uh, play a lot with my old XFX2, and I had a SoundCloud channel, which is up there somewhere still. And I used that SoundCloud channel to demo own hammer cabinets and amp models from the XFX and stuff. And at a certain point, I felt like it could be fun to add some visuals to that and also to sort of broaden the out audience a little bit. So then I thought, yeah, why not start a YouTube channel? And that's basically how it started, a very simple answer. But uh, yeah, that's how it went, basically. And now I have around 300 videos or something. So it's quite quite crazy. It's a lot of work, though, guys. A lot of work. Quick plug. I have cool. I have a couple of cool videos coming out soon. One video is a comparison of four of my big amplifiers: my Orange Rockerverb 50, my Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier, my PV6505, and my Marshall 410H. So, big comparison of those four amplifiers coming soon, next week probably. Stay tuned for that one. And I'm, like I said earlier, I'm also going to do a very fun blind test soon with my Kemper, my JCM 800 Studio, my XFX, and my Helix, just to see if you can guys can guess which one is which, and with a mid-gain crunch tone this time, so with more dynamics and stuff. Ha, should be fun. Stay tuned for that. Um, let's see. Ovonu says, Ovono. My question was if the attenuators work with the SV20H since the amp is getting its overdrive from the power section. So if you crank the SV20H and lower the volume with an attenuator, does it sound good? Hmm. Well, it sound all that I can say is that it sounds great with my load box. It's not an attenuator, basically. It's a load box, a reactive load, but it sounds amazing with that. Uh, a lot of people like to use their SV20H with an attenuator for obvious reasons, but I don't have an attenuator myself. If you get one, get a high quality one because that's quite important as far as I know. Marco Hahn, did you have any electrical hum problems with the PRS MT15? I love the amp, but the hum is annoying. Great question. Uh, well, I had another MT15 before this one uh, that I bought at the same store, but it had a weird issue with a sort of oscillating tone, like a and it would get louder and really start to oscillate, really weird problem. So I returned that one and got this one instead, and this one has been perfect. Of course, it does have some hum here and there with high gain settings, but what high gain amplifier does not have some hum or noise or stuff like that? Well, some of my high gain amps do not have any noise at all because they have a noise gate, like my Engel amps and my Hughes & Kettner uh, Grandmeister Lux 40. But most of my high gain amps tend to have a little bit of hum here and there. Maybe contact PRS or the store where you bought the MT15 from to see if uh, they can fix the issue for you. Maybe it's a bad tube. I don't know. And Mark Muller says about the Origin that it's a great amp for classic tones like Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, and stuff. Okay, maybe I'll have to look into the or Origin amps again. Maybe we'll see. A E J J S uh, says, "What did Metallica use back then?" I guess the XFX. Yes, uh, when I went backstage the first time at Pink Pop in 2014, they had a rig with XFX twos, I believe, or XFX two XLs. I'm not sure which one exactly. By the way, there are posts uh, about this on the Fractal Audio forums, where I also posted some pictures and stuff. My uh, username there is Guitar John. So if you if you want to meet, see pictures of me going backstage at the Metallica shows, check that out. Uh, but they yeah they used uh, their XFXs and um, they also used power amps, Matrix power amps with their traditional cabinets. And I also played through the cabinets, which sounded absolutely huge. And the last time that we went backstage at Copenhagen, which was in two thousand and seventeen. Yes, 2017, I believe. They also used XFXs, but this time uh, XL pluses, I believe. I'm not sure. But basically the same uh, the same setup. Syed Rajabi. Thanks. One more question. Active pickups such as Fishman, Fishman 
can help to reduce the noise during playing, especially fast picking in comparison to passive pickups. Reduce the noise during, hmm, I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's strange that I don't have an answer for you. Uh, I, I use active and passive pickups both with great success. Um, they both work for me. Uh, if you if you like very fast playing, yeah, it's all about taste. It's all about taste. So it's really hard for me to answer that question. Uh, both pickups have noise in in my experience. Active pickups have noise. Passive pickups have noise. Yeah, sorry, sorry that I can't answer that question perfectly for you. Aaron Buckrell, what do you think of the new Mesa Badlander? Like, I like how you don't need a load box to record. That's a great feature. Yeah. Um, people have asked me about the Badlander before. It seems like a great amplifier. Uh, I've, I've seen some uh, demos, and um, some of them weren't great, to be honest. Uh, some of them sounded pretty good. But, you know, the thing is, I like my rectifiers unboosted. I like them to sound huge with a huge blooming and saggy low end. And um, the um, the Badlander is made kind of to sound like a rectifier with a boost up front. It's more tight and more aggressive and stuff, which could be great. But I just I would I would have to try one for myself to give you a proper opinion on that. And also, I have a couple of amps that uh, also do silent recording, so that I have a built-in load box of some kind. And they usually are fine, but not as good as through a proper reactive load, usually. So that's also, I, I would have to try it to see how well, how good that sounds in the Mesa. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I would love to try one, but I have no idea aside from the demos that, I, uh, that I've seen. Let's see. Pip Pris, I got a question. Hi there. Thanks for tuning in. Since you do a lot of videos for Ownhammer, do you know the difference between the Revolution stuff and the formerly created cab IRs? Well, the feature set is obviously different um, because they have a different uh, mixes and different mics, which I love, by the way. I think those mixes are brilliant, and the naming is also really cool. Uh, they're really uh, like uh, suggestive of the sound, if that makes sense. Like the Forward 3 mix, which I like to use a lot, obviously sounds very in-your-face, but also big but you've also got the classic mixes, the brown mixes, uh, you know, vintage and stuff like that. So it really helps you to find the tone that you want very quickly. Uh, of course, those caps were also shot separately, so they're not old IRs repurposed or anything like that. They're completely reshot. And Kevin, the, the genius behind Ownhammer, he has refined his uh, capturing methods over the years, and he's using his you know, his current methods with the newer stuff. So it's it's going to sound a bit different and a bit better, in my opinion. If you haven't checked out the uh, the Ownhammer Revolution series, I highly recommend checking it out. The, the 412 Trad especially is one of my favorite all-time cabinets for hard rock and metal and stuff. Okay, let's see. More questions. Thanks, guys, and thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it, and I really um, enjoy these live, live q and so I hope you uh, keep showing up at the next ones. Let's see. Um, I'm right that Mark Muller says, I'm right that Metallica early used JCM 800s, and today most of the time rectifiers. Well, it's not that simple. <laughs> um, they've used a lot of stuff over the years. Um, and one of the, the, the like the Metallica amps that you you you'd have to uh, get in order to get like the main James Hetfield sound is probably a Mesa Boogie Mark II C plus or plus plus or you know any of the Mark series amps like a Mark IV could do like a Mark V as well. That would get you that tight early '90s, late late '80s guitar tone. And I know that they also you they they use them in the studio still today but they you like they like to blend that tight mark tone with uh you know diesels or rectifiers they blend that stuff together usually so um yeah there's no simple answer to that question unfortunately 
But for live, of course, they use the Axe FX now. Let's see. 2550 Marshall, what do you think is the biggest contributor to guitar tone? Ha. Uh, yeah, that's a bunch of factors. That's, that's all these factors into one, if that makes sense. The player, the pickups, the guitar, um, the amp, speaker. All that stuff is very important. Um, it's hard to say which which factor is the biggest contributor to guitar tone. The guitar, the pickups, and the amplifier, and the speaker, I guess. And the player, oh, so hard to answer. Super Gigawatt asks, what kind of cables do you use? Great question. I don't have a great answer. I use all sorts of cables. Just affordable cables, mainly. Fender stuff, Toman stuff, various cables. Cordial, I don't have any cable preferences. So that's not the most, the best answer probably. But uh, yeah, it works. It works for me. Running on empty. Long ago, I lived in Chicago. Ooh, okay, okay. That's not a good name for that city. I've never been there, but it doesn't sound promising. I built stage equipment and trussing. I got to meet a lot of really cool bands. Thanks for sharing your Metallica experience. Thanks for this. A lot of great people questions here. Thanks. Yeah, a lot of great folks around here. Uh, definitely. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And thanks for your questions. I'm going to stay here for about 15 minutes. So if you have any questions, be, be sure to drop them right now before I uh, leave you guys. Khan Yilmaz, for another question about the amps, what about PV Infective MH? Have you ever tried or looking for modern metal tones? Any recommendations? Thank you in advance. Uh, I would love to try a PV Infective MH, but at the moment, they are very hard to get over here. I even talked to some guys uh, that uh, work uh, with the import of those amps in the Netherlands, but they even have a hard time getting hold of PV, uh, PV amps because uh, their production is a bit weird. That's what I've understood, but I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I would love to try one. But the 6505 MH is also great. And I heard that the at least the, the drive channels sound quite similar. So it could be worth looking in, into that amp as well. Pip Pris, also just quite recently a sub subscriber, but very awesome channel and interesting. Looking forward to your next videos. Greetings from Aachen at the German border. Thank you. Thank you. Dankeschön. Thank you for uh, subscribing and for uh, tuning in. I appreciate it, and I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Mm. Let's see. Um, I don't know if I, can, if I can answer all of your questions, but I'm going to do a couple more. I can't believe how good your rectifier sound is without a boost. It's great, Eric. Thank you. I love that tone. Maybe with those amps, it's all about mindset because if you play through a rectifier with enough, you know, um, what's the right word? Conviction, willpower. I'm not sure what the, the right word, with the right intention, you can make a rectifier sound great without a boost. Don't expect it to sound very tight and articulate. Expect it to sound like a rectifier, so a bit loose, scooped, fizzy, with a huge bottom end. And if you just accept the sound of a rectifier for what it is, it will bring out great playing. <laughs> that sounds kind of philosophical, but uh, yeah, I love rectifier sounds without a boost. And especially the mini rectifier, which in a way sounds similar to my dual rectifier, but it sounds a bit tighter and a bit more mid-focused, slightly, slightly more mid-focused than the dual rectifier that I have. So that's a great rectifier to play without a boost as well. But yeah, thanks. I love uh, how my rectifier sound as well. <clears throat> Mark Muller says about the Marshall stuff that we talked about just now. If you want, if you want to play high gain tones, I would buy a DSL. Yeah, the DSL is quite cool for high gain stuff. A quite cool and slightly, well, a slightly more affordable option for high gain tones than uh, some of the other Marshalls. Unless, of course, you have budget for a JVM because the JVM amps are, of course, amazing for high gain. Um, let's see. 
let's see. Thanks for your answer. Thank you. Yo, 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 Rui Buitka. Welcome. 10 more minutes before I'm going to end this live stream because two hours seems like a great time to end. So if you have any more questions, we've got about 11 minutes to go. So be sure to drop them right now. Let's see. Could you do a comparison between a Digitech drop tune and an XFX virtual capo? Could be cool, but it's not something that really interests me, to be honest. Um, who knows? Who knows in the future? Thanks for the suggestion. Marco Hahn, do you record bands in your studio commercially? Well, I don't record drums or anything like that in my studio. I do mix stuff. Uh, and I've had bands over here that track their guitars or vocals and stuff. Uh, but usually what they do is they send their stuff over and then I mix it and edit sometimes as well. And I, I have worked with some bands from all over the world, bands from America, bands from France, and uh, another couple of places around the world. Uh, so usually what I do is mixing. That's the basic uh, thing that I like to do here. Um, Jay Larson, great question, by the way. Do you have a preference between seven string and a baritone? Well, both are awesome. Uh, I don't have a preference. I have a bunch of seven strings and I have a bunch of six string baritones and they are all great. They do uh, invite different chord shapes and stuff, if that makes sense. Like when I play on a six string baritone, like the, the shapes and chords that I like to use are often very similar to what I would play on a regular six string, of course. And when I play a seven string, I tend to go for different chord shapes and stuff, of course. So um, that's a bit different, but my preference, I don't know. I guess I play seven string a bit more often than the baritone guitars, but it, there's not a big difference there. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say, but great question. Something to think about for sure. Both are great, but yeah, they just invite different playing styles and different chord voicings and stuff. <clears throat> Tadeo Kelly, Tadeo, how long ear training until your mixes sound good? Is there any common EQ on your guitars? Great question as well. Uh, about ear training, what I would say is just do a lot of work and experiment and you know mix a lot of music and put time in that. And that will help you fine tune your ears and also listen to the records that you love and listen to how they sound and see what's going on in those mixes. Is there any common EQ on your guitars? Well, no. The only thing that I like to do on my guitars these days is do a low cut and around 80 hertz or something, depending on the source. And that's all that I like to do. If I feel that my guitars need EQ, what I would usually do is go back to the plugin or the IR and change that around until it sounds good. Because to me, that always gives me more natural sounding guitars rather than grabbing an EQ and fixing it that way, if that makes sense. I hope that answers your question. Um, mm, 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 mm. let's see. I have no questions. I came late today. So, Suomi Perkele. Hey, no worry, man. No worries. Welcome. Welcome. M. Belmer, 59. I tuned in late. Will there be Kemper packs? Still trying to decide between the Kemper and the Quad Cortex. I did talk about this earlier. I'm not sure yet. I'm playing with the idea, but I'm not sure yet how to how to do that but uh, right now I'm very excited about uh, direct profiles with IRs because that has worked very well for me so far it really allows me to capture the, the, the pure tone of the amplifiers but it really enables me to switch out the cabinet sound which of course is a very powerful way of tweaking your guitar sound so that's where I'm at right now but who knows who knows Stay tuned for, for news about that. Provata, love the live Q&A. Good evening and greet from France. Merci beaucoup. And I hope, I hope to see you next time. Uh, a couple more minutes, guys. Seven minutes. If you have any more questions, drop them right now. Marco says, cool. If I ever have some serious recordings, I would love to pay you to mix it properly. Awesome. I would love to mix your music. Let me know when you're ready. Because, as I said earlier, I do mix music here. So if you'd like your music to be mixed by me, just let me know. Send me a message. 
Super Gigawatt, everyone give a thumbs up. Thanks for the suggestion. Yes, a thumbs up would be great because that always helps. Comments do help, sharing helps, but subscribes, thumbs up and all that stuff really helps to get the videos out there, uh, especially especially nowadays. It's, it's, it's getting harder and harder to get to get a lot of views on videos because there's so much content out there. So every thumbs up, every comment that you guys give really helps a lot. So thank you guys for always supporting me. Avonu, Avono, do, do you prefer Stefan Carpenter or Sevens with EMGs or Fishmans? Great question. Um, I like both. Um, yeah, it's a bit of an easy answer, but uh, the Fishmans sound great. They're a bit more refined. They're a little bit more stale if that makes sense a little bit more clinical and the emgs have a bit, a bit more attitude and beef so sometimes i prefer the the more nasty sound of the emgs and sometimes i prefer the more refined sound of the fishmans i guess for the eight string i would say that the fishmans are great because they have a little bit more clarity and bite for the low notes uh, Cliché Guevara, best solid state amp. Hmm, I only have one, and that is the uh, Black Spirit by Ux and Kettner, and I really love that one. So that's my only recommendation right now. Jose Andres Yanes, any thoughts on Music Man guitars? Uh, well, yes, I had uh, a John Petrucci six string, I had a seven string, and I also had um, a Silhouette once. And they were great guitars, very, very high quality, very playable, but very skinny and very tiny necks. So shredder guitars, definitely. These days I'm more into guitars with a bit more body, a bit more solid. But having said that, I would love to have a Petrucci one day again. And yeah, one of those BFRs would be amazing. Okay, a couple more minutes, guys. Give me your questions right now, or otherwise you'll have to ask them in the next Q&A which is fine also, by the way, because I would love to see some of you there as well. Uh, let's see. Some stuff, some, uh, let's see. Embalmer, what pickups are in your Les Paul? And if you can swap them, which would you choose? Great question. My Gibson Les Paul has a Super 57 in the bridge position, which is uh, supposedly a uh, classic 57 with a bit more output. Um. Uh, and then the neck position is a classic 57. Both sound great. Uh, the Super 57 has a lot of bite, but it has power. It's chunky, but it also does that vintage thing very well. I would not switch them out at all because they just sound awesome. Yeah, they really sound awesome. Cliché Guevara. Impress girls. Lydian mode plus dive bombs <laughs> versus slow pentatonic bends. Wow. Wow. I've never tried to impress a girl with either <laughs> that's a funny question it's a really great question it depends on the girl i guess i think john mayer really impresses the girls and he prefers the latter he prefers slow pentatonic bends so maybe that's your answer right there ejjs have you ever tried bare knuckle pickups yes i have a bare knuckle aftermath in my nw44 it's a really awesome sounding pickup. You can hear that pickup in my upcoming uh, amp comparison next week of my four big amps. Stay tuned for that to hear the bare knuckle in action. Tommy Jones, what is your favorite free amp sim? Ooh, great question. Oh, man. Hard, too hard to answer for me right now. And I'm going to go away in one and a half minutes. Um... <laughs> Marco Hahn, have you ever tried the Angle Metal Master amp? Any thoughts? If so, I have not tried that amp. It looks really cool. I've, saw, I've seen some videos of it that sounded pretty nice. And all the Angle amps that I've tried have been awesome. So you can't really go wrong with an Angle if that's the tone that you're after. Okay, that's a wrap for this live Q&A. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate your comments. Please drop a like. Please drop a comment. Please share whatever. I really appreciate all of that. And of, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned for my big amp comparison next week with my orange Rockefeller 50 dual rectifier PV6505 JVM410H. 
And also stay tuned for that awesome blind test that I'm going to do of my JCM, uh, my JCM 800 Studio, my Kemper, my XFX, and the Helix, which should be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for tuning in. Goodbye to you and stay safe and a happy new year to you all. And I really hope to see you in my future videos and my next live stream. So thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.